Hi, my name is Akiva Goldman, and I'm an attorney with Goldman & Associates. And we represent a lot of people who are charged with domestic violence. We do it very well. And today we're going to uh, deal with the issue of, can I go back home if I'm charged with domestic violence? This is a, a potential client call we get all the time. Uh, a person's arrested, they're charged with having a fight with their spouse, and now they want to know, can they go back home? Well, the answer to the question is, um, and really before I get going, let me stress something. I'm about to tell you something that might inspire more questions. If so, circle back to us either at AkivaGoldman.com or give us a call at 248-590-6600 and we can elaborate on it. But the question becomes, can I go back home if I'm charged with domestic violence? Well, putting aside the issue of should you go back home because you know, you're at great risk if you're already facing one charge, the person could call the police again on you and that make it worse. But in Michigan, most of the time when someone's charged with the domestic violence, the court when they are out reign is going to enter a no contact order. And that no contact order means you cannot go back home because you cannot have uh, any communication with, with the other person living in the house who's the victim of the crime. Now, if that person is not at the house, then you can go home. Typically, the no contact order will be specific to the person and not an address. And if it is specific to an address and the home is vacant, you can have the court modify that so that you can go back home. The question then also becomes, well, what about kids? If you're not letting me go back home, how am I supposed to see my son? How am I supposed to see my daughter? So that's an important question. Typically, this no contact order will not involve the children. It'll only involve the victim. So therefore, it cannot be used as a tool to keep you away from your kids. If you need to arrange for some sort of parenting time schedule and there's a no contact order pending, then we arrange it through third parties. We have the kids dropped off at a neutral point. You don't involve yourself with the communication with the other person. You just involve yourself with your kids. So there are ways to work that out. Another issue comes up is, well, I'm not allowed to contact my husband, but he's calling me. What do I do? Well, if the victim is calling you, you don't take that call. And if the victim says, uh, I have a flood in the house, I know you're not supposed to come here, but you're a plumber, can you come fix it? It's the middle of the night and we're getting flooded out. You don't go. Because if you do, you run the risk of violating the court's order. And I have seen people who've gone over to help their wife in the middle of the night in a snow emergency, only to be brought before the court and put in jail for violating that order. There's a million plumbers out there. There's a million people who can shovel their snow. There's a million things that can go on to take care of the problem, and it can't be you. And if there's a complaint about it, you can say, look, you can go, the, the wife or the other person who's the victim can go to court and get the no contact order lifted. Until such time as they do, though, you need to be mindful of the fact that going over there would be a violation, and you don't want to do that. If you have any questions, call an expert. We'll be glad to help you out.